Two major new chunks of Spectrum are coming online soon to better enable 5G across the United States. What is CBRS? What is C-Band? Learn more in a moment. Hi, I'm Chris at the Mobile Internet Resource Center here today to talk about a geeky topic, cellular spectrum. Now, spectrum is to cell carriers kind of like real estate is to land developers. It is the foundation for all the cell networks that are out there. And in the 5G world, cellular spectrum is kind of divided up into three different flavors. There's low band, which is basically the same spectrum that's already being used for 4G everywhere, travels a long distance, not super fast, and when they put 5G on this low band spectrum, it basically is going to be, you know, just really good 4G, not a transformative different experience. Then you've got millimeter wave spectrum. This is super high frequency, super short range spectrum that can give you speeds maybe even a hundred times faster than 4G. So crazy new 5G world there, but super, super short range, so only useful in certain types of locations. The sweet spot for 5G is known as mid-band spectrum. This is spectrum that can still have a huge speed increase over 4G, but has enough range to actually be useful for covering large areas. And also, perhaps most important, it's not already being used for 4G. So it's open, undeveloped real estate for cell carriers to build on top of. And, well, in the United States in particular, there's not a lot of mid-band spectrum to go around. So the cell carriers have been kind of scrambling with their 5G network plans, waiting for more mid-band spectrum to be freed up. And the FCC is now going through an auction process to free up some very significant chunks of mid-band spectrum. We're going to tell you about two of them, the CBRS band and C-band. So first up is CBRS. Now this is a band, we've done a video and a, a story on this in the past, in this past January when it was first authorized for use for 4G cellular and stuff, but that was just the beginning of CBRS because CBRS is a very special band. Now this band is the first time that a uh, they're trying to allow cellular spectrum to be shared similar to how Wi-Fi spectrum is shared. Um, to explain a little bit how this works, there's three tiers of priority access to CBRS spectrum. So you've got this chunk of airwaves, and there are certain incumbent uh, users, the U.S. military and certain satellite companies, that have priority access, but they're only using the spectrum in certain places and at certain times. So why waste all the spectrum reserving it for these priority incumbents? The CBRS system has a technology in place that lets them say, hey, we're not using it. Other people go to town, use it. So then there's general access, which means anybody with any type of device that applies by the rules and knows how to check in with the authorization system can use CBRS for cellular. So you potentially have private cellular networks or um, care major carriers can use this for extra capacity. All sorts of great things you can use with um, general access. But general access has the issues of Wi-Fi. You know, everybody is competing for those airwaves. There's nobody who is in charge. So there's a major chunk of CBRS that's set aside for priority access. And that means um, the companies can buy priority access licenses and then have exclusive rights to that channel when they want to use it. And that means it becomes a really, really great foundation for building 5G on top of. So the FCC has just concluded the auction to sell off these priority access licenses for CBRS. They sold seven licenses per county all across the United States and raised well over $4 billion. And now we know who the winners, who was spending the money to have all buy all this new spectrum um, across the country. And the two big winners, Verizon and Dish Network. So first off, Verizon. What is Verizon doing with this? Verizon invested um, a huge amount of money, nearly $2 billion, to buy um, the CBRS spectrum in key cities. So they didn't focus on being nationwide with this. They just bought extra capacity in the places they really desperately need extra capacity and bought a lot of it. Uh, Dish Network took the opposite strategy of where they didn't compete heavily in some of these major cities, but they bought Spectrum in basically everywhere across the country, giving Dish Network a foundation for building their nationwide 5G network upon. But it wasn't just Verizon and Dish that were competing. Um, all the three major cable companies that have aspirations of being cell providers also 
bought um, CBR Spectrum in their market. The, the, the three big cable companies all bought Spectrum. It's Charter, Cox, and Comcast all bought Spectrum in their market, spending hundreds of millions of dollars each. And then a whole lot of smaller companies, um, local wireless ISPs, regional carriers, even in some places, uh, university campuses, companies, oil factories, bought licenses for their areas of operation so they can do their own private local LTE networks or 5G networks. So CBRS is a uh, happening and happening fast all across the country. So so that's the CBRS auction, and it is concluded, and the carriers, once they basically pay their fees, are able to start using the CBRS spectrum pretty much immediately, and a lot of the carriers have already deployed the radios, and uh, this could be rolling out pretty, pretty quickly. Now, the next auction that is queued up that starts in December is an even bigger deal, and this is the C-band auction. So this is an even bigger chunk of spectrum, you know, basically twice what was available for CBRS, and this is going to be auctioned off for exclusive use. So no sharing, um, bigger channels, we could transmit at higher power. So this is the real juicy sweet spot for mid-band spectrum in the United States, and it is expected to be a fierce auction with um, Verizon and AT&T and potentially T-Mobile and anybody else who really wants to compete on 5G nationwide bidding hard, and the auction is expected to go upwards of uh, nearly $40 billion. So C-band spectrum in the rest of the world is already available. It is the uh, foundation of 5G in most other countries. But in the United States, it's got, um, again, satellite users and federal users who are currently using it. And so even once this auction concludes, um, um, probably early next year, it starts in December. The, this spectrum is not like CBRS where it's ready to go day one. The carriers then need to wait for the existing users to move off of it. It won't be till the end of 2021 for half of it and till the end of 2023 for the other half of it for the spectrum to free up. So this is the carriers planning their futures and investing potentially huge billions into their futures to buy up all of this spectrum, which will be essential for our 5G. Now, the one carrier that maybe doesn't have to worry about this so much is T-Mobile. T-Mobile has already been through the process of buying mid-band spectrum. That was the main reason T-Mobile acquired Sprint, because Sprint owned basically all the available mid-band spectrum, a huge chunk of it in the United States, and now T-Mobile already has that and is able to start deploying that rapidly. They're up to 90 cities and towns that have deployed mid-band 5G, and T-Mobile says that they will be way ahead of the game having thousands by, of cities and towns by the end of this year and ramping up from there as they turn the old T-Mobile, uh, the old Sprint network over to T-Mobile mid-band 5G. The other carriers are racing to, to get their own mid-band, but as you see, it's going to take a while um, to get there. Um, the one other thing now to keep in mind, though, is, well, if you buy a 5G device now and all this mid-band spectrum is the future for these carriers, is the devices you buy today going to be compatible? And that is a really tricky question and no certain answer. Because um, the mid-band spectrum, the, the 5G over CBRS, and particularly the United States 5G over C-band, um, are both, but CBRS is brand new and 5G over the C-band hasn't even been auctioned off and certified by the FCC yet, it is impossible for devices to ship and say that they are compatible with this yet. But if you look at the 5G devices, if they're compatible with C-band in, in, in Europe, theoretically, with a software update, they'll be able to be compatible with the future C-band deployments in the United States. But there is no guarantee. So when you're shopping for 5G devices, keep in mind that this mid-band spectrum, when it comes online in the next year or two or three, is going to be essential to a lot of 5G performance, particularly on Verizon and AT&T, and you don't have any guarantees that the devices you buy today are going to be able to take advantage of that. So keep that in mind. It's just more evidence that we're still in the early days of 5G evolving and rolling out and you know, moving to take over the world. So being an early adopter, you've got to go in cautious, know that there might be software updates to come, you might be left behind, you might be looking to upgrade in a year or two, but again, it's technology, you'll probably want to upgrade for other reasons in a year or two, but just go in eyes wide open and know that 5G is evolving rapidly and lots of new spectrum coming online to make it good and fast. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. 
They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.